all we were thinking about was sine of theta is 2 over 5. So we would say, you know, opposite over hypotenuse. And what I told you guys to do is just draw a triangle. It didn't matter what the triangle was. You draw a right triangle, throw theta in there in one of the other angles, and then you say that's opposite, and that's the hypotenuse. Right? And it didn't matter what the triangle looked like. That's, that was fine. And you could evaluate the six trigonometric functions from there. However, here, you can see we're adding now a restriction. We're adding a constraint. We're saying, yes, the sine of theta is equal to 2 over 5, but cotangent of theta has to be greater than 0. So when we see this constraint or restriction, we're going to now apply this on our x and y axis. So now we're going to create our triangle with regards to um, a, as central angle. So now we've got to basically identify, well, which quadrant then is going to work? So we think cotangent of theta is greater than 0. That means it's positive. And remember, cotangent is going to be x over y. So it's either going to be positive in the first quadrant, which would look like this, or it could be positive in the third quadrant, because it would have a negative x. right? You basically have a negative x over a negative y. So cotangent would still be positive. Right? So now we look at this and we say, actually, I'll forget the negative x. Let's just put a 2 and a 5. That's opposite over hypotenuse. And this one is opposite over hypotenuse. But you guys can see, as we draw these triangles, we have a glaring issue. Because this one makes sense, but that doesn't make much sense at all. right? Because you're going 2 down. So that should be a negative 2. And obviously, if it was a negative 2, sine would have to be negative. Does that make sense? Yes? No? OK. So this is not the triangle. We're just going to refer to this. So for all these problems, you're going to have two options. You're going to have to decide which quadrant is your angle should lie on. Um, and now from here, we can basically use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, phi squared equals 2 squared plus, let's call that x. And from solving here, hopefully you guys get the square root of 21. All right? I'll just show my work here. And now, here comes the other thing. Remember when I told you guys about the plus or minus? Right? Now the plus or minus matters. We're OK here because we know we're going to the right. But let's just pretend my answer was negative. This is not square root of 21. Right? This would have to be the negative. So that's why that plus or minus is so important. Right? Before, we didn't care. It was always positive. But now that we're talking about direction, we need to make sure that the square root of 21 is of my positive length, which in this case it is. right? But if the problem was changed, and you guys can see, you guys have some negative problems up there, right? So you need to understand when it needs to be negative and when not. Now, fortunately for us, we don't need to worry about it for this one. So now all we need to do is evaluate the sine, cosine, and tangent. And again, what I'd like you guys to do is show your work just like I'm doing. The sine is already given to us, so that's pretty easy. The cosine of theta is obviously going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. There's nothing we can simplify there. And then the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And again, you guys don't need to show your work for rationalizing the denominator. But if you can at least write the original for me, and then write the simplified answer. So I'll show rationalizing one last time, and then we'll move on from there. So the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is 5 halves. The secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which is 5 over the square root of 21, which is basically equal to 5 square root of 21 over 21, as you rationalize the denominator. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which I'm not going to want to reciprocate this. I'm going to want to reciprocate the original. And that's why, Colton, the original is so important to write down so you can really quickly rationalize or just reciprocate that. Two. So I know you guys like wrote down those final answers, right? And probably on your page when you guys were doing the work, you guys wrote the original and then simplified it. So just show that so then everybody can follow that. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Does anybody have any questions on evaluating the six trigonometri trigonometric functions when given a constraint? No preguntas. <laughs>